Hi everybody, it's Matt here, your local friendly neighbourhood vestibular migraine sufferer. So, a bit of a video today that's going to have a bit of a slightly different feel to it. So, what's going to happen shortly is I'm going to introduce the topic and then it's going to cut to a couple of pictures. But obviously, you'll still hear me talking. I need some pictures to illustrate what I'm going to do. This is proper Blue Peter stuff. So, I did an interview last week with Johan, who's known as Chappiness Man. And I will, I'll link it below if you've not seen it, check it out. It's, it's, it's worth a listen to. Anyway, during that interview, he asked me a question that kind of almost in, in cricket terms stumped me. He asked me a question along the lines of, well, what do I think is going on with this vestibular migraine? What's, what's gone wrong in the body? What's, you know, what's the problem here? I was able to answer it and I can't even remember what I said, but that got me thinking and, and kind of thinking about it in the week since I did that interview and kind of like, I think in my mind, I've narrowed it down to two possible hypotheses about what's going on. And that's based on my own knowledge of the subject, my conversations with people, conversations with specialists, doctors, um, reading, that kind of thing. And I've kind of, I think we all get like that, don't we? We, we, all, we all absorb knowledge and it goes into kind of like the blender. And then we come up with kind of hypotheses or, or, or understanding or explanations of what's going on. So... I would say, based on all my knowledge, I've narrowed it down to two. So they're kind of similar, but very slightly different in terms of explaining vestibular migraine. So I'm not saying this is right. It's not, it's not right or wrong. It's just a hypothesis. And we all know a hypothesis change. They get disproved. Remember, there was once upon a time, there was a hypothesis that the, the world was flat. And obviously that, that got altered uh, once they discovered that the world was actually round. So I'm not saying this hypothesis or these hypotheses I have here will be disproved. I'm sure they could be challenged, whatever. And any of you uh, listening to this video, do pop on the comments below whether you agree, whether you see it a different way, whether, what your tell me what your hypotheses are. I so said this is just really there for debate and really just to kind of really put it down on paper. So I guess this video is my theory of everything um, where we are now. So might as well get on to the scenario. So with a click of the finger, you should now have a picture in front of you. So you can see this is my first scenario. So my writing is a bit poor, so I've tried to be as neat as possible, but I do apologize for that. I should have been a doctor, shouldn't I? So you can see that in the top left-hand corner, it says a bit of a, an explanation as to what this is. So this is, this is my hypothesis that is around the central nervous system being disrupted, which then leads to VM. So what I'm arguing here is that vestibular migraine is almost like a symptom of a wider issue with the central nervous system and this diagram tries to explain it here so you can see we've got the at the center of the the paper we've got the central nervous system drawn a square no reason for that other than the pen went that way so something happens to the central nervous system so i've called it here seeing the red there that it's i've called it a disruption so that could be, I don't know, that could be anything, couldn't it? It could be a virus, it could be hormones, it could could be an, even an accident in some cases. So this scenario sees the disruption upset the central nervous system. And then one of the issues created by this is kind of the classic VM symptoms. That is like the classic things like derealization, people who suffer from vertigo, that sort of thing. But then some of the other symptoms people have spoken about connected to vestibular migraine which i've had myself as well so you can see on this, this sheet here there's breathing issues and there's bp for blood pressure issues which i spoke about in the previous video it started to get me to wonder whether actually is this actually the vestibular disorder doing these things or is it actually the disturbance to the central nervous system that's doing them so it so what i'm trying to say is i don't think well in this in hypothesis i'm saying that i don't think vestibular migraine is the cause of all the problems we suffer with i think it's the disruption to the central nervous system which creates vestibular symptoms so you know vertigo you know like i said but then it will also create these other ones here and of course you can see in the in the, the top left hand corner we've got anxiety and depression which is obviously one of the horrible symptoms so maybe in this scenario here the key here is that maybe we need to treat the disruption to the central nervous system so that's why I found it really interesting and did the video the other week on drugs that, that are used for blood pressure, which are, are kind of calming drugs, which are there to actually calm the central nervous system. And maybe, 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 maybe that is a key um, piece of the jigsaw that's been missing for a while because we have actually focused too much on 
it being an issue with the vestibular nerves or, you know, it, it would focus on atypical migraine um, medications. You can see in there as well how in this scenario we can treat some of the symptoms we're seeing. So we obviously treat the anxiety and depression uh, with the meds. So as you commonly it's SSRI. So I'm on sertraline. Um, I always forget what the American um, name for that is. I think it begins with V, but I can't remember off the top of my head. We've got the heart issues, BP issues, and we can use propanolol. Prop stands for propanolol there, beta blockers, other drugs as well. Then we've got breathing issues. So in my case, I have a asthma spray um, and then the VM symptoms, which you know is, is, is often a couple of drugs. So amitriptyline is one. Propanolol is used for that. The SSRI is also useful to treat that as well as the mood, the, um, the mood symptoms. So yeah, so switching over now to... Um, Sheet two, so you can see there in the top corner. So it's a central nervous system disruption, but that is actually caused by the the vestibular migraine or the vestibular issue. So you can see at the top there, we've got VM, or we we you know it could even be the you know the the vestibular um, virus version. I always forget it. Neuritis is it? I always forget its name. It could be could be hormones. Whatever that is, it triggers the vestibular incident or episode then that then upsets the central nervous system. So it's slightly different from the previous scenario, only slightly, but enough, I think, to argue that it's a slightly different hypothesis. So so here we can see it. And I think this is this is probably more of the common, common um, or most popular hypothesis, I suppose, going around at the moment. So the vestibular disorder goes off, bang, triggers, you know, all the familiar symptoms we know. But then what that, that vestibular... Uh, episode is doing it upsets the central nervous system because I think essentially the vestibular nerve is part of the central nervous system before anybody shouts that at me on the comments it probably is again I'm no doctor but anyway so that dis disrupts the central nervous system then we then see all the symptoms I previously discussed so we've got the heart issues breathing issues blood pressure issues anxiety and depression so in this scenario if you treat the vestibular disturbance as I think mostly that's probably the treatments most of us have followed. So we'll try and treat the vestibular migraine side as well, probably as well, and the anxiety, which is, as you all know, that's something I honestly always recommend, treat that anxiety and depression side because it so helps you. So anyway, we treat that vestibular disruption, the vestibular symptoms, and then what we should see over time is a calming of the upset to the central nervous system. And then these other issues, these, you know, the heart issues, breathing issues, they may calm it. Again, I'm arguing here because I'm I'm quite convinced now. Obviously, I can be challenged, but based on all the research I've done and, and in my mind, I think that some of these symptoms we're seeing, like some of the more you know fruity ones, like the heart issues or the breathing issues, they are because the vestibular episode disrupts the central nervous system. I don't think if you have a upset vestibular nerve is going to cause you to necessarily have breathing issues why would it so for me it feels like it's it's almost like isn't it it's it's like a where you have like a, a tributary that goes into a river if you have an issue with that tributary um that's where the problem is but then it goes into the main river and then it will cause issues within the main river that then cause flooding um for example so that's the argument there so i said this this is probably the more common hypothesis that um, is out there um, but as I said I think in both of these scenarios what it's showing as well is that the central nervous system is absolutely key and, and a key component to this illness so perhaps actually and I think I've mentioned this before um, we shouldn't really be calling it a migraine type thing it should be it should be perhaps classed or seen more as an illness of the central nervous system um, um, but there we go. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm no genius. So I'm going to click back to the camera now. So there we go. You should have me back. Yes, there I am. So those are my two um, hypotheses. Like I say, they are the two strongest ones I've got in my mind about what is going on here. As I said, not gospel truth. You know, don't take my word for it. Um, you might have your own ideas. As I said, stick them in the comments because I find these really interesting. Like that got me thinking about the blood pressure again and then the, the the girl who made the comment the other week about the information of the body um top comment and really you know that really made some sense so hope you enjoyed that as far as you can enjoy videos about a pretty nasty illness sorry it's probably inappropriate of me but there we go and um, but I, I thought it was 
would be helpful. Hopefully it's helpful. That's the right word I'm looking for. So yeah, there we go. Um, as you can see, I'm a bit neater now. I've got the old haircut now that the lockdown eased a little bit uh, in the UK. Um, I hope wherever you are, um, lockdowns are easing. I hope, hope we're not seeing the start of a second wave, but I won't talk about what that um, illness actually is because sometimes it can it can mean your video gets taken off YouTube because they probably think you're giving contradictory advice about the condition. So um, got a, a few few videos coming up. I still want to do my live video w w where I'm actually demonstrating the FL41 glasses in a actual real environment, but it's pretty tricky to try and do that in a supermarket at the moment with um, with social distancing and. And in the UK, it's mandatory to wear masks in shops. I'm not saying whether I agree with that or not. I'll just give a facial expression, which might give you a clue. Um, but that means, obviously, you can't be sort of running about filming, putting FL41 lenses on in a supermarket. But I will do that when the world allows me to. So I rambled on enough. This has turned out to be a slightly longer video. But as I said, hope it's really useful. Give me your theories and tell me what you think. And I'll see you again on the next video. So remember, as you were, you'll be again. Bye.